OSCE Render now lets you render animations and scenes from Blender on an oscilloscope. This video will cover how you can install OSCE Render and how to use it with Blender. First of all, we can go to the releases page to download both OSCE Render and the add-on for Blender, which is linked in the description. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download the EXE, but if you're on Mac, you can download the, the package or uh, a jar on, uh, on Linux. So I'm going to download that uh, along with the add-on. Um, you might get a warning like this just because it's downloaded from the internet, but I can promise you that it's uh, completely safe to keep it. So once that's downloaded, I'm going to run the installer. And again, you're going to, you might get another warning like this because it's downloaded from the internet, um, but you can just run it anyway. Once that's installed, you can open it up. And you'll see something like this, which is the cube, which is the default thing that I'm rendering on OSI Render. I'm just going to turn this off for now, make this quiet. And now we can move over to Blender and install the plugin that we just downloaded. So we go to Edit and then Preferences and Install and search for the plugin. So OSI Render Blender, Blender add-on. And we can enable that now. And you'll see in the Render Properties section, there's a new setting for OSI Render and we can connect to it. So I'm just going to close this and connect. If I turn back up the volume, you won't hear anything at the moment, and that's because we're not actually sending any information over to Aussie Render yet. To do that, we'll need a camera in Blender, and we'll also need to give this object an outline and send that outline information to Aussie Render. That's really easy to do, so you can just press Shift A to create a new camera. And I'm just going to move this camera out a bit. Something like that looks good. And we also need to make sure that the aspect ratio of this camera is actually one to one. Currently, it's a uh, 1920 by 1080, so 16 by 9. Um, but we actually want it a square uh, aspect ratio because OSI render and oscilloscopes, when you uh, display voltages on them, will show it in a square. So let's just change this to 1080 so that we're one to one. And you'll see that update on the left hand side. Now that we've got that, we still need to give this an outline so that we can send that information to Aussie Render. So I'm going to press Shift A again and open uh, the Grease Pencil section and select Scene Line Art. As soon as I do this, you'll see a, a, a black outline along the edges of this. And that's exactly what we want because that's the information that is going to be sent to Aussie Render. So if I go to the Modifier Properties here and then press Bake Line Art, what that's going to do is go through every single frame in my animation and apply this effect, give it the outline. And now if I turn up Aussie Render again, it will receive these lines being sent over to it. And there you go, you can hear something. So I'm going to turn on the oscilloscope now. And you can see exactly what we see here on the left hand side on the oscilloscope itself. So I'm going to minimize this again. And now that we've baked every single frame, we can go through the frames. And as we go through them on Aussie Render and on the oscilloscope, it will actually update the scene. So if I play this whole thing, you can see this animation play out. There are a few things that you might want to change to make this animation a bit nicer, particularly there's a line in the middle which might not be what you want when you go to this sort of angle. This looks a bit strange. So um, if we press continue without clearing and disable the uh, disable everything except from the contour, then bake line art again. Now we'll see that line in the middle has gone away. And if we play this, Now the animation looks quite a lot better. That's just a short overview of how you can use Blender with Aussie Render. If you run into any issues, please do report them in the comments or on GitHub. And I'm excited to see what everyone manages to do with this. Thanks so much.